living with dementia on a day-to-day -day basis can of course be a struggle for many. We follow a lady who looks after her mother who is living with the illness. Today I'm travelling to the small Lancashire town of Rottenstor. Here I'm meeting up with Jackie Walsh and her mother Mary Ingham. Mary was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which is a form of dementia, almost seven years ago and has been facing it day by day since then. You just want to turn that nail polish off, don't you? Pick your neck. I know I'll take it off after for that. Well, firstly, we, about five years ago, maybe more, maybe seven years ago, to be honest, we thought she had a problem, so we took her to the doctors and she went through a brain scan and all the, and they said everything was fine. It's just a part of old age. Anyway, we left it and then within another two or three years, we could see, so we went back to the doctors who gave her a memory test, who put her on to the hospital, who then diagnosed that she had Alzheimer's. She couldn't remember things, you know, she just had struggled to remember anything she'd done. Or if you were to go out, take her out, she couldn't remember, you're just telling you had to write a note down to remind her that you were going to come and pick her up. Um, guide her through with notes really and now also she were going out up to about eight months ago she was trotting down to Rockstar to Tesco's and back and buying the little bits usually the same things but and then all of a sudden about last summer she just stopped about eight nine months ago just stopped going so I never moved out of house then really unless she was going with somebody yeah, it was very sad having to go down and look after him, but at the same time, it came into my daily routine, you know. It came into me, as long as I knew she were okay, and she was having something to eat, and she was warm, and basically we were happy as long as she were happy. We were going in, like, my mum went from looking after herself to her starting to forget where then my sister started doing some shopping, but she was still going out with my auntie where she went out twice a week with my auntie, three times a week, and so I up to club. And then obviously, as things started slipping away, my mum couldn't manage, we were then taking over, we're going in every morning, making sure she had a breakfast, giving her a dinner, changing her bed every day because she started wetting beds, you know what I mean? And it all took to that to where it led to going into a care home. Mary has been living in a care home since December of 2014. Concerns were raised about her safety when people weren't around to check on her and to make sure that she was okay. Because she smoked and was scared of having a fire on, and she was using a gas fire, which was a bit, you know, the only plus side is she didn't use her oven because we used to go and cook for her. It is upsetting to see from an outsider's perspective how Mary has become so unconscious to what is happening to her and also how it is affecting her family who are around her. I think she really, really, it's had as big effect on my mum as it has on us. She's, she knows she can't, can't remember things, but she doesn't, it doesn't affect her. You know, it's not, not really getting her all frustrated. Photos and memories are a key part of helping someone who is living with dementia. It allows them to put names to faces and also to reconnect with the world that they are gradually losing. Who's that? It is clear to see how important these short-lived memories mean to somebody like Mary, but also to her family. They allow them to hold on to her persona for just a little bit longer. <laughs> Joining us now is Lucinda Parker, who you just seen in that piece. Uh, Lucinda, thank you for joining us this Thanks morning. For me. Um, so we'll kick it off then. Um, very emotional piece. Yeah. Uh, you know what? What made you think I want to do a story on dementia? Well, dementia has kind of become quite important now because more and more people are being diagnosed with it, and um, more and more people are, are estimated to be diagnosed with it in the future. I think the figure is a million by 2025, and that's just in the UK. So in 10 years' time, over a million people are going to be estimated to be living with this disease. And also, they're starting from a younger age, so it's not just you know a disease that you associate with you know elderly people and just, just old age. It's actually going to be diagnosed you know within 
the age group of 40s and 50s. Um, but I wanted to kind of focus on the families and the people who have to watch you know, their loved ones deteriorate in front of their eyes because they are the ones who have to care for them and have to put their lives on hold. Do you, because it's, it's about a million people, yeah. you said, you know, it's, it's, do, you, do you think that enough people know about the illness? Um, I think awareness is being raised more and more now because like last week it was Dementia Awareness Week. There are so many organisations that, you know, help people. For example, you've got like Admiral Nurses Group, you've got Alzheimer's.org, you've got dementia cafes where people can go to. And I didn't know any of this until a I actually... Cafe. A dementia cafe where, you know, people kind of get together, they can go with their families or their friends and they just talk and, you know, look at photos and try to kind of reminisce and bring back some form of memory that they have. But at the same time, it's almost really upsetting because it's so short-lived because then they end up forgetting it. And it's just such a heart-wrenching subject because you are losing like your persona and your, your self-being, really. And it's just so moving to see that the families, you know, being there for their loved ones. Yeah, I mean, you uh, have a personal connection yeah. with this piece, obviously. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it must be quite sort of heartbreaking to, to have somebody who you have connected with over the years that yeah. has now suddenly forgot most of it. I yeah, see. well, I can say my stepmom, her mum's just being diagnosed with Alzheimer's, which is a form of dementia, which Mary in the clip we've just seen, she's got Alzheimer's. Um, but uh, my stepmom's mum is in like kind of the, the stages of like denial, where she won't accept that she's, cause she's such a proud, proud woman, and she won't accept that, that she's going to lose her marbles, as she says. Mm. And it's kind of changing the, the perception for that patient of just thinking, you know, you're not going to lose your marbles you you know we're going to help you get through this and you know family bond and that's one thing that i've seen throughout doing this project and that is that family ties are so so important because at the end of it there is no cure for it and one thing that i found so again heart-wrenching is that um you know major drug firms such mm. as like pfizer and johnson's and johnson's yeah. they have actually cut research into finding um, a cure because it's so expensive. And We're going to have to leave it there. Sorry. Okay, but no, that's fine. But thank you very much for sharing your story yeah. with us.